Yeah. Man, it, now we are live. Yes. And uh, there will be some people that will start popping up and joining us in mm -hmm. just a moment. I know that. I've been in a live video. Oh, I know like, you're an old pro. No doubt. I've never been in a live video like this. Oh, really? Oh, there's two persons. Is this your inaugural time to be on Facebook Live? What does that mean? It means your first time. Yes. Oh, there's some folks that have joined us, Charlie. I have been on Facebook Live before. Yes. Okay. That's good. Oh, pro here with me tonight. Six. <laughs> See there, there's some folks that are joining us. And uh, anybody, can, can anybody say hello to Charlie out there who's joining me tonight? Yes. I'm having a sleepover here and I wanted to join. Yes. <laughs> Got me uh, a number one helper on board tonight. Okay. I am yes. really excited about this. Okay, I'm not seeing any comments, so I don't know if something's not working correctly here or what the deal is. So I do not know. <laughs> 17. All right. It's okay. Yeah. 16. Yes. I have no way the comments are not showing up. And um, you know what? Um, Maybe they Would you do me a favor? Go and ask Nana if uh, you can hear me on Facebook. I can't read. No comments are coming through. So for some reason, I don't want to have to restart. Let's see here. Hello, everybody. I'm assuming that you're able to hear me having a little technical difficulty here tonight with my phone. Um, I can see some of your icons, but I can't see any of the comments. So God bless you and excuse me for uh, rubbing all over this screen in your nose. <laughs> but I am trying to figure out what's going on here. Nope. Hey, evening. Thank you for joining uh, me tonight. And I guess I can pull it over here. Mickey is on Nana. Uh, has Nana joined me for the communion? And Charles is here. But I had to send him on a technical errand to, to get a report to, to see if, uh, if, if it's coming we through. We can hear you. Huh? We can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry I can't read your comments uh, to know who you are out there tonight. But I have Charlie, my grandson, who's going to be joining me for a few minutes here tonight. Daddy on there. Yeah, are they on there? Yes. You can wave at them. Hi, Mommy. Yeah, Daddy. and this is his inaugural uh, Facebook Live. Uh, I'm sitting on something. Time to, to teach, color. yes. And we're going to be uh, looking at uh, talking about God's will tonight in just a moment uh, um, from the, the Word. But uh, that's a good thing, don't you think, Charlie? Yeah, it's important that people know God's will and to know that God loves them. How do people know that God loves them? Because Jesus died on the cross. Yes, he did, didn't he? That's how we know God loves us, because he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us. A little bit, and I know uh, you have begun taking communion since you had your heart and, and you followed him in baptism. Yep, and on Elliot's birthday. Yeah. It's my spiritual birthday. That's cool. You were born again on the day that Uncle E was born, right? Yes, that is good. And I'm excited to have such a good helper here with me tonight. <laughs> yes, and I hope all of y'all are having a good week. And we're looking forward to Sunday morning because where are we having our church services right now, Charlie? So what? Where do we have our church services on Sunday morning right now? Where are we meeting? I don't know. Where, where were we last Sunday? Where did we church. have? Where did we? Where did we have church? Church. Where? Oh yeah, in the 
In the parking lot. Yes, and we had it out in the parking lot, the parking area, and we had a tent, didn't we? Our worship team, your dad was the worship leader, and Poppy preached and had a lot of people and had a good time, didn't we? And it got a little bit warm, but sun really cool about that. I'm excited about that. Indeed, I am. Amen. So we're, we're um, going to be talking to you out of the scripture tonight um, about being a promise receiver. And it's a good thing to receive God's promises into your life. And, um, and that's important. And it's important to know God's will. What are some of the things that we can do to help us to know God's will? Treat people nice. That is God's will, isn't it? And we read the Bible, pray. Yeah. B I B L E. The B I B L E. H O L Y B I B L E. The Holy Bible. B I B L E. That is good. That is good. Well, amen. God bless you. And um, I know you've got to go help Nana now. And Poppy's going to share some. Uh, from the, the scripture and in a little bit Nana's going to come back she may let you come with her you can talk to her about that okay mm-hmm. alright so I will see you in just a little bit thanks for joining me that's exciting I love doing things with no. Charlie yes see you in a few minutes okay okay <laughs> wow life is fun when you're a poppy yes Listen to this out of Hebrews chapter 10 tonight, because on Wednesday evening, Mickey and I talked to you about how to have a great faith. And we looked at Genesis 12 about Abraham and how he heard God speak and left everything he knew, not knowing where he is going, just that he was obeying what God said. And so we're going to kind of, or I'm going to tag on that tonight and talk to you about being a promise receiver. And out of Hebrews chapter 10, Uh, The writer of Hebrews was addressing primarily Jewish believers who uh, kept being tempted to go back to the Old Testament way of doing things, going back to the temple and offering the sacrifices. And we are often tempted to revert back to doing things the way we did before we came to know the Lord. So that was a very real temptation for them. And in beginning with verse 35, the writer of Hebrews says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have you may receive the promise. So there's that idea of being a promise receiver. After you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Then he says in verse 37, for yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Verse 38, now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So and when you hear this verse, notice me, with me, if you will, once again, just like we saw in Genesis, it's important to, to do the will of God. Why? Because Hebrew 10 tells us after we do the will of God, we receive the promise. Receiving the promise often follows doing the will of God. And I love this phrase, after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Very often, in order, before we get that uh, blessing, that reward, that uh, fulfillment, that thing we prayed for, it's going to require something out of us in order to do the will of God. Doing the will of God positions us of living in the will of God. And we certainly see that here. You know, we... we needs to be so in us that we're speaking, saying the will of God, that we're praying the will of God, prophesying and decreeing the will of God. And it's, it's, it's important, most of all, that we're doing the will of God, going back to that idea of acting on what God says that we talked about this past Wednesday evening. Now, it's interesting that the writer reminds us in these verses uh, to... 
which has great reward. In other words, they had learned some things. They knew the things that they should be doing, ought to be doing. They had been apostolically taught, directed, and trained, grounded, and anchored in New Covenant apostolic teaching. So it wasn't a knowledge issue of knowing what they needed to be doing. It was a an issue of beginning to lose their confidence that they were doing the right thing and it was the right thing to do and they started reverting and uh, and so the writer of Hebrews addresses this so I want you to notice two truths that he reminds us in this verse there's several of them but I want to talk about two tonight and the first thing I want you to notice is found toward the end of what I've read there in verse 38 he said now the just shall live by faith that's the way we live our lives. And when we've been justified by, uh, uh, by faith in Jesus Christ, then we're to live on that same faith, that same type of faith as Paul uh, taught. Uh, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. Just like you believe what the word of God says about who Jesus was, what he did on the cross, how he died, was buried and raised from the dead, confessed him and you were saved because you believed that, you put your faith in it, you acted on it as you've received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. In other words, you continue to live your life by faith and you continue to receive the promises of what God's word declares. And that's so very, very important for us to understand. So notice this first truth that turning back displeases God. After you've done the will of God, uh, you'll receive the promise. But verse 38, now the just shall live by faith, but if any draws back, the soul has no pleasure in him. If anyone draws back, uh, the, the Old Testament says in the book of Proverbs, the backslider in heart is filled with his own ways. You see, we turn uh, away from doing the will of God to another way, our own way, the enemy's way. There's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And here we're told that turning back displeases God. And in Luke, excuse me, Luke nine sixty two, Jesus said, said to him, "No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, kingdom of God." The people who are involved in kingdom activity are. And they're looking forward, not looking back, thinking about what could have been or going back to the way they used to live. But their eye is on Jesus and they're running the race in faith and they're moving forward. Now, when I was just a little guy, I remember helping my dad. He he plowed some in a small garden with an old Frank was a stubborn old mule, and I remember seeing my dad and several of my uncles having some uh, very heated discussions with old Frank, and uh, they would want him to G, and he, would, he wouldn't G, and they wanted him to haw, and he wouldn't haw. For those of you that don't know what that means, those were uh, commands that people would use in their mules back in that day, or at least my folks used those commands, G, haw, and old Frank was supposed to G, and he was supposed to haw. He was uh, supposed to go. Oh, he was supposed to stop, so to speak. But oh, Frank wanted to go his own way. And I, I saw one of my uncles, I mean, very red faced, using words that I, as a little boy, I didn't understand what they were. But I understood enough to know that I wasn't supposed to say them. And that uh, oh, Frank was really getting a chewing out, uh, a cursing out, if you will. Well, we're like that way. We can be stubborn in our heart. Do you know the Bible says that rebellion is the sin of witchcraft? And a stubbornness is like idolatry. You know, it's like we're wanting what we want instead of what God wants. And we can be stubborn. But it's so important that we desire to do the will of God and not turn back. Once we know what it is, not go back to what was. Uh, that's where often a lot of pain and misery is waiting on us when we draw back, when we turn away, when we turn back. The, the Lord finds no pleasure. Uh, for without faith, it is impossible to please God. He's pleased when we are living by faith, trusting him, leaning on him and believing him. And I remember a number of uh, years ago, actually, when I was first calling the ministry and 
And I was in the Word, listened to everything I could on the radio. And I remember hearing a, a preacher on the radio make this statement one day, and I never forgot it. He said, the will of God is what we had want if we had sense enough to know what to want. And you know that's the truth. God's will is always best. It's, it's not always the easiest way. But it's always the best way. It's not always the most painless way, but it's always the best way. It's not always the most comfortable way, but it's always the best way. You see, the Lord had rather you suffer because you're doing the right thing and you're moving in the will of God than for you to draw back and suffer because you're going the wrong way. The first type of suffering will be followed by reward. The second type of suffering is, the, is discipline and heartache and grievous. So the first thing I'm talking about is turning back, please, is God. If you want to be a promise receiver, don't turn back. In other words, start what God's told you. I mean, finish what God's told you to start. And that's a good question to ponder right now at this, at this juncture. Has God given you something to do and you know it's God's will? God told you to do it and you haven't been doing it or, you haven't, or you've laid it down or you put it in neutral and you haven't finished or you've given up. Don't draw back. Don't look back. Put your hands on the plow and get busy doing what God told you to do. Well, preacher, I just don't think I can. You can do all things through Christ who is your strength. Well, it's too late. The opportunity's already passed. Well, that's the time when you go on your knees and do some repenting and position yourself for the next thing that God gives you to do. And it'll be all right if you'll just do that. God meets us where we are when we start repenting and praying and humbling ourselves. The mercy of God the grace of God finds us and helps us get back on our feet, back on the right path and busy living in the will of God. And I just encourage you to do that. You, know, if you, you, you will not fail if you do not quit. Count the costs and do the will of God. Amen. Now, the second thing I want you to know this in the scripture is that doing God's will requires in endurance. See, what we're talking about is receiving the promise. After you've done the will of God, you receive the promise. That's a simple truth that's set forth here. But I've shared with you, you, you don't want to turn back. That doesn't please the Lord. But you want to move forward into the will of God, but you don't need to think that doing the will of God is always easy peasy cheesy. Uh, it's not. It's not the, always the path of ease. I've already mentioned that. Doing God's will requires endurance. Did you hear what he said in verse 36? For you have need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. In other words, they can, they can receive that promise if they just don't quit. If they don't look back, if they'll just hang on and keep swinging. You know, Babe Ruth, uh, he's the home run king or was for years and years and years. And of course, a couple of guys have already passed his mark. But most people don't realize that he was also the strikeout king. He struck out more than any other batter, but he had more home runs than any other batter. You know why? He kept swinging. He kept swinging. Let us be uh, not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Be ye steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You have need of endurance that after you have done the will of God, after you've finished the will of God, completed what God's given you to do, that you may receive the promise. Amen? That's simple, but it's not easy because doing the will of God requires endurance. That's what the writer says. You have need of endurance. You may be in a place right now that that's what you need is you need some endurance. You need the strength to keep going, to keep enduring. And, you know, keep your eye on the prize. 
Realize that promise will be fulfilled if you don't turn back. Keep plowing. Keep doing. And you know what? Whatever it requires of you to do the will of God, God promises to supply that to you. And if you're hearing thumping, I'm sorry, I just realize I'm beating the table while I'm preaching here, you know, trying to get my point across. And you're probably picking that up. I apologize for that. That's just one of those little preacher things, you know, and I can be preaching and not be aware of the things that, I, that I'm doing that might be distractful. Keep your eyes on Jesus and, and keep enduring so important after you have endured. It's going to require some endurance. I remember one time I was on an out-of-town trip and I was coming back, getting close to home. I was in an intersection. I had to stop. And then uh, when I tried to go again, uh, the transmission wouldn't catch. And my engine just whoo, revving up. And, I, and all of a sudden, those gears caught and I took off. And, uh, and I thought, well, I'm, I'm glad it's working. And, and it happened again in a few moments, and I, I shifted the, it was an automatic transmission, so I put it in part and pulled it back in drive and neutral and drive, and finally I got it to click again, and here I took off again. I went about 100 yards, and it just revved up, and it quit moving. I'd give it the gas, it was Wah! going nowhere, why? Well, the transmission retired on me. It just quit. It had to be restored and repaired. And sometimes in our walk with God, we're that way. Uh, we may be uh, revving the, the, pet, the gas, giving it gas, but we're not going anywhere. Why? Because we're not doing what we need to do. That's the transmission part. That's what causes movements when you put it in gear and, and it catches and then the wheels start moving. And in our life, that's, we need faith and we need strength to to move into and onward in the will of God. And we don't want to be like that. You know, God's will is not like, uh, not like a pair of rubber boots. You only, only need it uh, when you're in deep water. No, uh, God's will is more lungs. You know, you need them to survive. You need them to live the life that you've been given to live. The will of God. We need the will of God. We need to do the will of God like a, a bird needs air, sky to fly in, like a fish needs water to swim in, like our lungs need oxygen to breathe in. We need the will of God carried out in our lives. Obey Him, live for Him, worship Him. And it's not a grievous thing when we understand what He's done for us. It becomes for us to, to live sacrificially for Him. One thing it is difficult for us, it's difficult for us to be patient. And that's part of enduring, it's the waiting. We don't like to wait want it right now. You remember when the internet came out and how excited we were and we had dial up and you would click the button on your computer and it would go you'd hear all that and it'd be connecting and it would take forever and then a page would load. You'd think this is the most awesome thing I've ever seen. Here's somebody done some work and I can just pull it up on my computer and read it and it's just amazing. And then they started coming out with faster speeds. And now we've got Wi-Fi and we're wanting 5G. And if we had to wait a, a megasecond, like, my goodness, what's going on here? Why is this thing so slow? Why is it taking so long to buffer? Well, we had to wait two seconds for it to load 100 pages. My goodness. You know, we're, we're uh, an impatient people. We're kind of like a little cartoon character. I remember my children used to watch a little song that, that would come on and, and it was about patience. He, he'd say, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Give me some of that patient stuff. I can't wait to have patience. Patience is a wonderful thing. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Give me some of that patience. Our Christian, Christian walk sometimes, we, we don't know what it is to be patient suffering God is. You know, when, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I thought, man, everybody ought to do this. And I would get frustrated that people wouldn't receive the message of what I experienced. And one day the Lord spoke to me and he said, son, how long were you a Christian before you were able to receive this? Well, I'd been pastoring uh, in, uh, in a half years at the time, and I had been saved for, you know, uh, I had been saved almost 30 years. Wow. <laughs> God was very patient with me, but I was having a hard time being patient with others. Dear friend, 
being patient is part of endurance. And so it's important for us to understand this and to, to have some patience. And I want to tell you something. Uh, God, life is going to present you in difficult times. I'm not prophesying that over you. I'm just telling you that's the way it is. Uh, the Bible says, think it not strange when fiery trials come. And uh, that's just part of life. And Jesus will have tribulation. That's the, that's the word of Christ. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Enduring, persevering, all of those require patience, sacrifice, and often lots of discomfort. So I just encourage you tonight to keep this in view in your life during the tough seasons. And that's certainly a difficult time for our whole nation right now. And it might just be this is a word. We have need of endurance that after we've done the will of God, that we may receive the promise. Some seasons just endure. Some seasons we endure more than we may enjoy. Some seasons we enjoy and have to have little, uh, don't have to have as much endurance. Seasons when endurance is required. We're having to do things differently than we've done them before. We're having to wait in ways we haven't had to wait before. Uh, we're wanting to give back and do church like we've always done it, and we're wanting to do this, we're wanting to do that because it's familiar, but we're having to practice patience and endurance. We will make it through this season if we'll keep our eyes just shall live by faith. Let's keep our hand to the plow. Let's not look back. Let's not be those that displease the Lord because we draw back and start finding ourselves doing the things uh, like we used to do back then in our BC days before Christ's days and uh, reverting back to the old ways of doing things. No, we want to live in the will of God. And God will give us grace to do His will. Amen. And Father, just bless this word to our hearts tonight. Help us to be a people who are promise receivers because we're enduring and we're not drawing back and we're living by faith and we're doing the will of God. You have need of endurance that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. And I am being joined now by my sweetheart. We missed you tonight. They had to hear me solo tonight. Boy, we had Charlie. We had Charlie as the warm up. Yeah, you coming back? Come on, Charlie. You come over here in between uh, Nana and Poppy, and uh, and Nana will get you uh, some communion as well. And I have bread here for him. That'll take just a moment, and you folks can prepare your bread and your cup to celebrate communion with us. And we want to remember Jesus tonight. Amen. So let's hold the bread up. And the bread represents the body of Christ. And we want to think about Jesus. And so let's pray. Let's bless this. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you lived a sinless life that in your body there was no sin. Thank you that you willingly gave your life as a sacrifice for us. Indeed, you are the bread that comes down from heaven, that's come down from heaven, that meets the hunger, the eternal hunger in our heart. You feel that, that need of eternity that's in our heart. Thank you for eternal life, Jesus. Thank you for bearing our sins on the cross in your body. Thank you for the scourging you went through that we could be healed. We remember you, Jesus, and we honor and worship you now. Would you eat the bread with me, remembering Jesus? Would you take the cup? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you gave your blood for us so that our sins could be forgiven. Uh, we thank you for being our sinless sacrifice, for offering yourself freely for us so that we could be made right with our Father 
and enjoy all the blessings in this life and in the life to come. And as we take this cup, we thank you, Lord Jesus, and we remember your blood and take the cup. Thank you, Lord. Well, we hope that you have a wonderful Friday evening. And uh, if you're not involved, uh, you live in the area, and you're not involved in a church elsewhere, we invite you to Grace House this coming Sunday morning at 930. And where will we be meeting again, Charlie? The parking lot. <laughs> yes, we're having an outdoor worship service in the parking area. And uh, we're excited about that. We'll also have our online service as well. It comes on at 10. And, um, I, and if you attend somewhere else, we're excited about that for you. We're so happy to be a part of the body of Christ. And we love uh, our, sister, our brothers and sisters and our sister churches uh, around the world, but particularly here in our area. And thank God for all that you do. And um, it's just good. I hope that you are experiencing the joy of the Lord. <laughs> And you're going to have as much fun as we are going to have here tonight with Charlie and his little brother. And we have six grandchildren all together, but we're having a good time tonight. Uh, you would not believe how sore I am because Charlie and I played another game of tag. Hide and go seek. Yeah. Hide and go seek. Yeah. And I was right behind the couch. Poppy tried to jump over the couch, but he fell. <laughs> on his back <laughs> and I made it to base. That it was the championship round <laughs> and ever who won that round was the champion and I went for the gusto and tried to jump <laughs> over the couch, didn't quite make it, but the floor actually caught me uh, rather quickly <laughs> on the other side and it kind of made a loud kaboom by sound, didn't it, Charlie? Mm -hmm. But somebody was really happy that they did not get tagged and made it back to the base. <laughs> yeah. I won! <laughs> yes. And with that, we'll but, sign off. Praise the Lord! Yeah, praise, praise the Lord. Lord! There you go. There you go. Right. Well, we got to go. Hope you have a great day. I will read your comments. I don't know what setting I've uh -huh. got wrong. I'm not able to see your comments, but I'll read them after we, we log off here. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Tell them goodbye, Charlie. Bye. Goodbye. Love you. Bye.